Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're going to be talking all about Wi-Fi. Uh, this is one of those areas of technology that has had a lot of change in the last few years and I wanted to get you all caught up and up to speed. So here I present to you everything you need to know about Wi-Fi in 2018. Coming up next on Tech Talk America. I want to start off today's video by just quickly mentioning who does not really need to worry about this topic. Uh, so any of you out there who live in smaller homes, uh, you don't really need a powerful router for just like a small apartment. Now that does depend of course on walls uh, and your neighbors because all this interference can kind of come into play. Also I would say anyone out there who uh, if you have like DSL as your internet connection or satellite, just a really frankly slow internet connection, getting a good router isn't gonna really do a heck of a lot uh, to help you if you don't have a lot to work with in the first place. I also feel like I have to mention that if your modem is older than, I would say at this point, maybe around three or four years old, uh, it might be worth checking into getting a new modem at the same time as getting a new Wi-Fi router. So the big question here is, why should I care about having good Wi-Fi in my home? Well, basically, I would say it kind of breaks down to you're not getting what you're paying for if you don't have a good router. So the first tool that I want to give you is a great app just to kind of give you a realistic idea of what kind of internet speeds are you capable of, at least currently. Uh, so the name of the app that I would recommend you check out, it's also available as a website, is fast.com. And the big reason behind why I would recommend this app, by the way, it's free, uh, is because it is actually powered by Netflix. And so, uh, you know, it's hard for me to talk about net neutrality because we live in a world where news changes all the time and this video is a snapshot in time. But I will say this, if you are worried that you might be getting throttled, this will definitely give you a good idea of that because of the fact that it's being done by Netflix. So before I explain to you how this newer technology works, let's first go over how the old stuff works. A lot of older wireless networks uh, either have you on a single channel or they have two different channels, but they're two different networks. Let me try to explain that in more layman's terms. A lot of networks, when you create them, they give you a 2.4 gigahertz network that you can create and a five gigahertz network. Now, each has their own benefits, but they also have their own downsides. So for example, a 2.4 gigahertz network uh, will give you great range, but it's not gonna give you great speed. Whereas a five gigahertz network is gonna give you a lot better speed, but less range. I can't even tell you how many uh, house calls I've made with people where it's like in one room, they have to join the five gigahertz network, but then as soon as they walk to the other room on the other side of the house, now they gotta switch over to the other one. And if they're on one network, they can't print, and it's just, it's a whole nightmare. With the newer technology, that problem is totally gone. Now this newer technology is referred to as mesh. So typically with any mesh system that you buy, these typically come with more than one unit, which you will strategically place at different parts of your home. These different units communicate with each other in order to make sure that data hits your device as fast as possible. All right, so the two products that I wanna show you today, and there's actually a third that I would recommend, uh, which I'll give you a link to down below, but I didn't have time to get it here. Uh, the first one we're talking about is Google Wi-Fi. You can see it right there. And the other uh, network solution that I would recommend is the Netgear Orbi. The number one piece of tech support, if I can give you, uh, regardless of which ecosystem you end up going with, just before you install anything, go on your phone or your tablet and download the corresponding app before you disconnect your old router. Uh, because these days, that's how you set a lot of these, these things up. There's actually a little uh, QR code on the back. And so all you do is you scan that with your smartphone after you've downloaded the app and it just kind of walks you through everything. Let's start with talking about Google Wi-Fi. This is just a great consumer product. Uh, it's fairly simple to set up. What I love about it is that on the actual, on the bottom of the unit, if you have any problems, there is a 1-800 number listed right there uh, that you can call if you need help setting up anything. Another thing about Google Wi-Fi is it's definitely, I would say, the easier solution to go with if you are the kind of person who either already uses Gmail for your email address or if you have a Google account. 
All right, now the Netgear Orbi, uh, this is an interesting router, and I would say I would possibly these days slightly recommend this over Google Wi-Fi. So uh, with the Netgear Orbi, you have these remote little base stations that you plug in. Now, one of the differences here is between these two products, between this and Google Wi-Fi, is with Google Wi-Fi, each unit has an ethernet port. So if you have like other things that you need to plug in, like a printer or maybe a network attached storage drive, something like that, you know, you have, with either of these, you do have three connections. The difference is with Google Wi-Fi, you'd have to put one of those network attached devices in one room, another in another room, and another in the third room. Whereas with the Orbi, you will notice that all three extra ethernet ports, if I can hold it there, uh, are all located on the back of the base station unit. So, uh, for example, in my home, uh, all of these smart devices that I have, pretty much I keep all of their base stations and my printer, all of that stuff is next to each other. So for me, theoretically, this might be the better solution. Now, one of the biggest differences between Google Wi-Fi and the Netgear Orbi comes down to parental controls. So if you are a parent, listen up. Both of these devices give you great access as a parent as far as being able to filter content. However, the Netgear Orbi does have a feature that allows you to go a level deeper. So let me explain the difference. In Google Wi-Fi, you have the ability to pause devices whenever you want. So if you want to create uh, just kind of a regular routine where maybe your kids' devices lose their Wi-Fi connection just before bedtime and then don't regain that Wi-Fi connection until the next morning, you can do that. There's no extra service fee or anything like that to make that happen. There are also built-in content blockers. So for example, if you want to prevent your kids from visiting adult websites, you can enable that with literally just one click. I do have to say that no content filter is perfect. Uh, while these typically work very well as far as blocking websites that have adult information, they do not work well when it comes to blocking adult content that lives inside of apps. Now in the case of the Netgear Orbi, you do have access to slightly better parental controls if you want to get to the level where you actually see what websites your kids are going to and if you want to see exactly how much time they are spending inside each app. Now the important thing to know about this is that this is all done through a third-party service that they have bundled with the Orbi referred to as Disney Circle. Now this has a free version and it has a paid version. So if you go with the free version, you can do certain things like pause devices, have access to your kids' web browser history. Now if you wanna see the analytical data as far as the detailed history about how much time they're spending on each website, that is all part of the premium version. That's $5 a month. Thanks for watching everyone. Uh, if you decide to get one of these, I would love to hear your feedback. So please feel free to leave me a comment below and I will see you next time. This is David A. Cox with Tech Talk America, class dismissed.